Welcome to the Project Electrolyte Tech Series. Today's video is about thermal management. This video is by request, so if there's a system you'd like more detail on, hit me up in the comments. One of the most common questions I get is why does this car still have a radiator? You can see I found an aftermarket aluminum radiator and just mounted it in the factory location. This radiator is suitable to cool a big block Mopar engine, so it should be more than enough to cool my motor and batteries. In fact, I split it into two halves, so on the right side is the motor, the left side for the batteries. For motor cooling, I use this 12 volt Tesla pump and it pulls from the radiator and goes straight back to the motor. The coolant from the radiator gets fed into the side of the motor. It passes through all the way through the differential and the inverter and then returns to the radiator. As the coolant returns to the radiator, it passes through a temperature sensor I stall installed in the return line. That information gets fed into the Holly smart wire. And that's how I cycle the radiator fan. When it gets above a certain set temperature, it'll cycle that fan on and off. The motor has a very wide temperature range. You can't really be too cold. And if it overheats, the motor will just derate itself using the Tesla software to keep everything from burning up. So the derates are good for longevity, but not for racing. So in the future, I'm going to add a system that will use this air conditioning condenser and the AC pump to chill the motor below ambient temperatures. If I can ice the motor before I run down the drag strip, that'll give me more time to build up heat before getting a D-rate, and that should give me a better time at the track. The chiller system will take a couple of components that I don't have installed yet. One will be a flat plate heat exchanger that will pass coolant through one side and Freon on the other side. And then I don't want to pass through the radiator if the condenser is removing heat, it'll push it right through the radiator. So I'll also need to bypass the radiator with a three-way valve. Now the battery system is a little more complex. It's not just about cooling. They need to be completely thermal managed. There's a temperature range for discharge from negative 20 C to 60 C. Discharge is okay on these batteries. Charging, on the other hand, is better off between 10 degrees Celsius and 45 degrees Celsius. Now that we're deep into fall, the cooler temperatures, you don't really need the radiator for the batteries. So it's in bypass mode. You can see there's no returning coolant going to the radiator. The circulation really just keeps the batteries at an even temperature, and it also cools off the charger. On the really cold days, if I'm below 10 degrees Celsius and I need to charge the batteries, I've got a battery heater. This will bring them up to the safe temperature and then allow charging without damaging the batteries. These battery modules are from a Model S P100D, so they've got dual cooling loops. Each one of these loops is fed in parallel. So I've got 32 loops total, and they all want to be fed with even temperature. And so each of the three battery boxes has a manifold with an in at the bottom and out at the top. So all of these parallel loops, just like the front box, this rear box feeds the bottom and then out the top. And then that goes through a final return. You can see it splits off here from those parallel lines and that will also cool the charger. This is a dual purpose charger. Not only does it charge the battery pack when plugged in, but it's also the DC-DC converter. So having the liquid cooling keeps that uh, as a very robust system. So after passing through that charger and DC converter, this final line flows back up to the three-way valve, which will either choose the radiator path or just straight back to the pump. Just like the motor side, this battery return line has an inline temperature sensor that feeds information to the Holly smart wire. That lets me control a number of different functions, everything from the battery heater, the bypass valve, the pump, the fan, and that gives me lots of options in the future when I decide to do fast DC charging. There's also an AC flat plate heat exchanger, so it will fire up the air conditioner, the bypass valve, and chill the batteries if needed. Now race mode, 
in addition to chilling the motor in the future, it can currently heat the battery. So I use the same heater that I would use in cold temperatures to take these batteries all the way up to 50 degrees Celsius, just like the Tesla does in their race mode. What that will do is reduce the internal resistance of the cells, allowing more voltage to flow straight to the motor. So all of the low voltage, as well as the contactors, are all controlled by the Holly Smart Wire. This is a 30 output programmable power distribution unit. You can set fuse limits and do functions like relays would do, but also logic programming. You can also monitor everything. Here you can see battery pump, how much current it's drawing, the current voltage, and its status. So all of the different functions once they're wired up into the system, gives you lots of options as far as programming the logic. Here's a look at some of the logic that turns on the motor fan. So we've got different parameters that are inputs into the Holly Smart Wire. So in this case, we need ignition on and motor temp above 35 degrees, or while charging if the motor temp was above 35 degrees. Also, when the fan switch that's built into the air conditioning system gets triggered, it will kick the fan on. It'll actually turn on both fans, that way the condenser operates much more efficient. Now this one has a little bit more going on. This is the battery heater. And we've got lots of inputs. We've got ignition, charger, battery temperature, and then we have race mode. Now we can use multiple battery temperatures. So if the battery is just in the cold days when I need to char charge the car and I want the battery temperature to come up, you can see this first one has race mode is off, ignition is on, and the battery is cooler than 9 degrees. Same with the charge. And then when race mode is on, we'll take the battery all the way up over 45 degrees and cut it off at 50. And another example would be the bypass valve on the battery. So if race mode is on and we're adding heat, we definitely do not want the radiator so it will bypass. And then there's a temperature setting for when the coolant will pass through the radiator in order to cool it down just in normal driving. What I really like about these new power distribution units, and, I, and I'm a big fan of the Holly Smart Wire, as you can see I've got the battery temp and motor temp. Those are the sensors. The rest of these are the outputs, and there's also hardwired inputs as well as uh, modules that you can daisy chain on to have as many inputs as you want. Once everything's wired up, as I learn and grow and want to make adjustments, I can just reprogram these different functions. I can also add uh, quite a few temp sensors and other sensors. They all just communicate to the smart wire via CAN bus, and you just daisy chain them together. Once all of these functions are programmed, everything is pretty much automatic. You can turn on race mode with a switch. It'll monitor temperatures and the cold weather. Uh, most of it's hands-off. There's also some functions in the battery management system, so let's go log into that. So in addition to the two temperature sensors I put in the return flow of the motor and the battery, each Battery module also has thermistors built in that I've wired to this thermal expansion unit on the Orion VMS. So that's reading the temperature at each individual module. Looks like I have a fault on one of them. I'll have to check that out in a little bit. I like how the Orion displays the data, and it also will tell you the highest and lowest, just to give you an overall feel of the battery pack. That information can be transmitted to a dash, which I'm using a Bluetooth dongle off of an OBD2 port and I send that up to a tablet in the dash so I can monitor all this data from up front. So using this thermal information there's a number of things you can do. Here's one of them. I'm using a multi-purpose output. This will actually open a relay and disconnect the regen on the motor when it's below these temperatures. So if I'm below 10 degrees I don't want to charge and I definitely don't want regen to charge and then above 45 degrees the same thing so that will disconnect regen which will keep the batteries from any damage and here's another function with the charging you can see there's these amperage limits based on temperature so again anything below 10 degrees uh, it does not allow any charging 
So looking at the dash, you can see that high temp and low temp, the 13 and 11, that matches what the battery management was showing from the laptop. And this is just a way to easily monitor. And then if you see this little 0.7, that's the highest resistance in the pack. So when I'm in race mode and I'm heating these up, that resistance, you can actually watch it tick down. So just as an overview, the thermal management using coolant is relatively straightforward. The motor, just flow it through the motor, back through a radiator, very simple and straightforward. The batteries take a little more thought and design, making sure they're all in parallel flow. And then if you want a good four season car, you definitely want the ability to heat them, which is also an advantage for racing. And then cooling them, possibly supercharging or fast DC charging, using the AC to chill them. It just takes a little bit of uh, design and thought to put it together, but there's plenty of tools out there to help program and monitor and manage the entire system. Thanks for watching this video on thermal management. I'm a sucker for thumbs up if you like it, and be sure to hit me up in the comments if you have any questions or would like to know more about other systems. We'll see you next time.